Namaste and uh, welcome everyone to this lecture number 10 in our series, India, Our Mother. This is something we've been organizing as part of our ongoing celebrations of 150th year of Sri Aurobindo and 75th year of Indian independence. And it's really wonderful that today on this special day of Mahalaya, we are really happy that we'll be devoting some time to soak in some of the grace, beauty and poetic charm of Savitri, Sri Aurobindo's mantric poem, mantric epic poem, which is, as we know, essentially a record of the avataric work of our divine master and divine mother. And today we'll be focusing specifically on the beauty of mother nature in Savitri. And uh, to do that, we have uh, Dr. Charan Singh Kedar Khandiji from Himalayas, who um, my colleague Ram will be introducing just uh, in a minute. But um, I'm kind of reminded of just once when somebody had asked the mother, what is nature? A very specific question. And her response is very insightful. And she said, nature is the most material part of the creative force, which is concerned with the creation, especially of the earth, of the material world, as we know it upon earth. And then she also said at some place that uh, the whole life of plants and trees is as if a worship of light, the material symbol of the divine. So, um, you know, this, this side of like uh, reminds us of this nature's yearning for its hidden divinity and the light which awakens in the nature is seeking for that oneness with the creative source, the creative force that is the para prakriti behind behind nature behind prakriti, and uh, when again um, I'm reminded of when somebody had asked mother whether it helps to be in contact with nature. In what ways can it help? Her response was that if we can really begin to feel a communion, a sort of deep love for nature, and we can get into this communion with nature, it can help in widening the consciousness. So this idea of nature helping us widen the consciousness, giving us a sense of renewal, a sense of renewed joy, um, which is, you know, at the, as we begin this beautiful phase of Navaratri, the nine nights of Divine Mother, um, there couldn't have been a better way to begin that uh, starting today, the, you know, the descent of the mother. Um, then this invocation of um, mother nature, beauty of mother nature in Savitri. So I'm really happy that it turned out that today we are having this session today. So uh, I would like to request Ram, my colleague from Aurobharati, to briefly introduce our speaker for the day. And then we will soak in some of that beauty of mother nature from Savitri. Thank you, Billiji. Good morning, everyone. It's really, uh, I'm really feeling happy to introduce uh, Dr. Charan Singh to all of you. So, Dr. Charan Singh Kedar Kanti is a poet, thinker, and an avid seeker of Sri Aurobindo's path. In 2013, he completed his doctoral research on Sri Aurobindo Savitri. So, he regularly contributes articles on different aspects of the vision and work of Sri Aurobindo on the mother in various journals including our own uh, Renaissance, the e-journal of uh, Arobharati. In 2019, a collection of his poems in Hindi, covering a wide range of his insights on life, nature, and spiritual quest, was published under the title, Mook Vedana Ka Kaljai Kadanak. So presently, uh, Dr. Charan Singh works as Assistant Professor of English at the Government PG College in Joshimath, uh, Uttarakhand. He was instrumental in establishing, establishing the Sri Aurobindo Study Center in Joshimath. And he has been uh, closely associated with the works of Sri Aurobindo Society in uh, Uttar Pradesh and also Uttarakhand, also serving as uh, state secretary in the past. So we have also had the pleasure of hosting him earlier in the same series of lecture uh, named India or Mother. And uh, today we are again happy to welcome him uh, for another uh, topic that's on uh, English and uh, beauty of nature in uh, Savitri. So it's a great pleasure to invite you, uh, Dr. Charan Singh. Uh, welcome you and uh, over to you. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Ram. Am I audible properly? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. My deep and infinite gratitude and pranams at the lotus feet of the Divine Mother and Rishi Aurobindo. My pranam also to the feet of Savitri for blessing me. I invoke the pleasure, the blessing, the protection, the wideness, the light and force of Mother Savitri. Those remarkable lines, those remarkable uh, words that may I explain, interpret, enter into your consciousness with the way I should, spiritually and as well as materially. I offer my sincere gratitude to Aurobharti, to an extremely devout and devoted child of the Divine Mother, Dr. Belu Mehraji, for having invited me uh, on this day for this deliberation on perhaps the toughest book, materially, intellectually very toughest book of, of the Under the Blue Sky, that is Savitri. Uh, heartful namaste to all children of light, children of the Divine Mother and Sri Aurobindo who are joining me online platform through this media. Dear friends, the day Sri Aurobindo started penning Savitri, or should we say visualizing Savitri, he was uh, in a way a mantra drishta rishi, a seer of the mantra of the creative force of the creative world. And the whole of Savitri, as we all know, is a record of its seeing more than writing or viewing or penning. It is, it is a matter of, uh, it is a record of his spiritual sadhana, a record of his spiritual recollection and face-to-face -face interaction with the creative world that is mantra. But the day he started writing it, all of us know uh, Mona Sarkar's, those famous uh, records in which uh, he shares with the mother that the day Shri, the mother shares with Mona Sarkar that uh, the day Sri Aurobindo started writing Savitri, he revealed before the mother that I have launched myself on a rudderless boat in the vastness of the infinite. So the, 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 the single most, this single quote summarizes and encapsulated, encapsulates the very spirit of Savitri, the grandeur of vision, the loftiness of ideas and uh, intimations of uh, spiritual recordation that is there in that remarkable poem. Dear friends, apart from the main and the core theme of Savitri, that is the philosophy, the spiritual battle of Mother Savitri with the forces of the, the demonic and dark forces of nature uh, with Yama, apart from a remarkable uh, book of poetic philosophy, poetic uh, and, and encounters with, uh, with, with unreality, apart from the core theme of bringing down heaven on this earth, on this deeply suffering earth, perpetually in privation. Apart from that, Savitri is 100% perfect, a 24 karat gold on the touchstone of poetic rasa, poetic ananda. It is a marvelous encounter with natural beauty also, the poetic delight, rasa in the term of uh, uh, Indian aesthetics. It is full of rasa. It is full of nature. The whole of poem, the very cosmic theme, the very cosmic uh, idea behind the poem, the whole poetic beauty, the remarkable mantric, mantric effects of the uh, lines of Savitri, it's full of natural delights. I can safely say that this poem is basically a poem of nature. It is full of natural delights. And I will second my opinion. I will support my opinion about this premise by telling you that all remarkable episodes and incidents of the poem happen mid deep proximity of nature. The birth of Savitri happens when nature's all nature was at beauty's festival. It is spring. 
all the sounds and sights and delights and hues and colors and chorus of nature is at play. The time when Savitri, Mother Savitri meets Satyavan, her spiritual cohort and spiritual consort, in the, that is in the forest, the book of love, the entire book of love, it's, it happens in the forest. We all know that mythologically and spiritually, Savitri is part of the Mahabharata. It is part of one parva. And basically the whole region of Shalva and as well as Madra is based in and around Gandhamadan, Gandhamadan Parvat. Coincidentally, the place where I'm speaking from falls in Gandhamadan. It is called Bhubakunt, Badri Chetra, heaven on earth. The whole epic, and it will be of great interest for all of us that Sri Aurobindo mentions Savit Alaknanda in the Book of Fate. And that Alaknanda embraces, washes, touches the feet of Joshima town in, in the Himalayas. So remarkably, this is, the, this is the epic of Himalayan grandeur. It is a, basically an epic of Himalaya. And Himalaya is synonymous with nature. The delights, the sounds, the mystic silences, the spiritual government of the world that happens here by the remarkable sages of Gyan Ganj, the fabulous Gyan Ganj, the wonderful, splendorous atmosphere for tapasya that is here in the Himalayas for deeper spiritual inquiries, personal introspections. It is a remarkable atmosphere. So Savitri, more than a prophecy, more than a poem, Savitri also is an natural atmosphere for personal growth, for spiritual realizations. The very lines, the very mantric effects, the very atmosphere of Savitri is a kind of spiritual aura, a kind of natural uh, and sanguine, and it, it is a kind of serenade, a perfect rhythm, a perfect poetry, a perfect atmosphere for individual growth. So the whole of the book of love happens mid forests where mountains and fountains are at their best delights, where so many natural silences and sounds are there at play. In fact, there is a line that runs in Savitri, love in wilderness met Savitri. Savitri, she found Satyavan in the deep wilderness, in deep forest, grandeur of nature, uh, somewhere in the Himalayas. Then her, the book of yoga, which is personal spiritual journey for accumulating Shakti of Savitri also happens in the Himalaya. There are so many mystic things. There are so many mystic encounters. There are so many beautiful heart touching episodes uh, based on nature, uh, about nature in that book. Then the book of death also happens in, in, in the forests amid all those sounds and silences with touching songs which Satyavan is uh, going to sing. And with that singing, he loses his consciousness. He loses his life force and whatnot. But before that, he introduces Savitri, you know, uh, with the nature, with flowers, with creepers, with branches of different trees. Those trees were his bedfellows, his clothes, Play, play, play friends uh, uh, of his playmates of his childhood. He knew every sound, he knew every mood of the forest. Unfortunately, one of the bands of present life is that we are miles away from the natural grandeur and natural life of forests, of nature, of mother nature. We are living an artificial atmosphere, breathing an artificial life. And that is why it is little difficult to go into, to enter into the atmosphere that Savitri spiritually presents before us. But nevertheless, we can effort, we can have our, we can put our effort in our understanding and relishing of that atmosphere. Then again, the whole scintillating debate of love and death 
love represented by Mother Savitri and death represented by the demonic dark Yama force, the force of death that is Yam. But that too happens with all its uh, mind boggling philosophies with all its wonderful insights or, or in favor of truth and in favor of this world with all those sublime utterances the music of nature is at play in the himalayas amid that discussion and finally when the victory is won when heaven is won permanently for earth Finally, the return of the earth, the last canto, the epilogue of the book, that too happens in Himalayas, that too happens in nature, uh, with that remarkable feeling of reunion and the brief search for the uh, son and daughter-in-law and then the re reunion and that, uh, that beautiful promise towards greater marching towards from dawn to greater dawn. Uh, and with this word, the, uh, the canto finds a culmination in that. So what I mean to say is the whole of Savitri is actually a remarkable recordation of natural beauty. Every page has its own delights, its own joys, poetic joys. Apart from the sublime philosophy, the truth, the spiritual encounters, the close colloquies that Savitri is amid the characters, it is a remarkable it is a wonderful poem, full of spiritual rasa, full of natural delight. One of the one of uh, to realize God, and Savitri comes up with the key that nature is the best door, best doorstep to enter into the some some realization of God or Godhead. On page 37, Sri Ramdo says, God found in nature, nature fulfilled in God. Both are inseparable. Nature and God are inalienable. They are inseparable. They are, they are interdependent. And if we wish to know God, the key, the door, the gateway to that realization is nature. Again, furthering the discussion on page 624, again, he says that how, how we can find nature, uh, God through nature. Shirvindu writes those magical four lines, his, his laughter of beauty breaks out in green trees. His moments of beauty triumph in the flower. The blue seas chant, the rivulets wandering voice, are murmurs falling from the eternal's harp. The whole world is fulfilled in outwardness. The, 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 the whole God is fulfilled in outwardness. There's everywhere God in nature. So these realizations are of great value for us to understand that we can enter into the aura, the splendor, the consciousness, the chitabriti of God by loving, by venerating, by adoring, by appreciating, by developing purity, and then entering into the nature, nature's beauty. Again, on page number 630 in the book of uh, Love and Death, in the debate of Love and Death, Sri Aurobindo writes, writing for God, he is beauty caroling in the fields of sound. He chants the stanjage of the arts of wind. Oats of wind, he's silence watching the stars at night. He wakes at dawn and calls from every bough. So again, he connects the idea of Godhood to the beauties, to the grandeur, to the realizations of nature. These different sounds which we hear in the morning, the cuckoo calling from the nearby straw, straw uh, shed, the different birds calling and inviting from the branches and foliage, the sounds of rhythmic winds, the different colors, the day dawn, everything is part of uh, intimation from nature, hints from nature that I am God, all is God. So nature and natural beauty is 
one of the marbles, one of the greatest delights, one of the closest ecstasies that Savitri actually is. I now start with the very first canto, how beautifully Sri Aurobindo describes the beauty of dawn. You know, 24 hours, uh, the, the, the most remarkable face of nature, one of the delights of nature is to, to witness the dawn. Those of us who have seen the morning grandeur, how it dawns, how, it, how the light slowly touches the mother earth from a single ray, from a single corner, then the whole darkness is it, it, it is diminished and suddenly the the there is an outbreak of great physical light in the whole world so it is a great it, it is a great good fortune to witness dawn anywhere in the world shared the rights one lucent corner windowing hidden things forced the world's blind immensity to sight Dawn, in a way, compelled the world, which is so much in infatuation with the, the darkness, the dollar. It, it, that divine ray, that sun ray, forced the world to embrace, adopt the sight. And darkness, the darkness failed and slipped like a falling clock from the reclining body of a god. So he's describing sun as sun god, and the whole earth uh, is, uh, is in deep darkness. And by the power of that sunlight, by that beautiful dawn, the, the darkness is slipping away from the body of God, the earth mother, and there is light everywhere on earth. Then dear friends, one of the majestic moments of Savitri, the Mahakabya is the birth of Savitri that happens at the time of spring. When, to use Sri Aurobindo's words, all nature was at beauty's festival. How he's expressing the nature's delight, the different moods and minds and faces of, of nature. How entire nature is welcoming Savitri's birth. How nature is preparing for that birth sublime that Savitri is is mag magnificently described in these lines that fall on page number 352. All this is just moments before the birth of Savitri, moments before the spiritual ray touches the mother earth. All sights and voices wove a single charm. The whole nature is preparing a chorus, a perfect song, a single charm, the herald, the advent, the welcome note of Savitri's birth. All sights and voices wove a single charm. The life of the enchanted globe became a storm of sweetness and of light and song. The whole earth, the hypnotized globe, the enchanted globe, the globe that is in deep spiritual aura of Savitri, of the sages, of the rishis, has become and is going to become a storm of sweetness and the light and song, a revel of color and of ecstasy. Ecstasy is the word that comes almost on every page of Savitri. It is a poet, poem of Ananda. And Sri Aurobindo explains, he defines Savitri while talking about her personality. He calls her priestess of immaculate ecstasies. Savitri is Nishkalank Anand ki Devi. Priestess of immaculate ecstasies. All the joys, all the bliss that Savitri holds are immaculate, unsullied. They are pristine and pure, virgin. They will never get diminished. Like the joys and the pleasures of this world, which are very fleeting, very impermanent. So priestess of immaculate ecstasies. 
one of the blessings, one of the ashirvat that will be showered on us is delight. If we go into the aura and the atmosphere of Savitri. So definitely the priestess of immaculate ecstasies will bring, will create an at atmosphere of joy and ecstasy around her, even before her coming here. So this atmosphere is magnificently described by Sri Aurobindo, the sage divine. A hymn of praise. You can you can smell the lines. I would I venture to say that this poem, this page, is the most sweetest and most sensuous page of the entire epic. It can safely be compared with John Keats' marvelous poem. Ode to Nightingale, where the poet is talking to the nightingale, expressing before her all the impermanent joys and faces and happenings on this earth, and wishing to leave this world and to enter into the aura and the atmosphere of nightingale. I naturally become sentimental when I go through that, that, that poem because the poet in his poetic as well as personal life is deeply suffering and naturally wishing to avoid that suffering, wishing to find out some remedy, some panacea to cure that suffering. Fade far away, dissolve and quite forget what thou among the leaves hast never known, the weariness, the fever, the fret, the frustration of the world, where beauty cannot see her lustrous eyes and new love cannot, cannot pine at them beyond tomorrow, where youth grows pale and spectre thin and dies, where but to think is to be full of sorrow and lead a night despairs. Whenever we think of this world, whenever we look around us, we see only dolor, deep sorrow, sense of hollowness, sense of meaninglessness, septerfuses, shenanigans, ruses, deceptions, deep sorrow everywhere. Where is the joy? I am suffering. I wish to come to your world. And then he enters poetically through the viewless wings of poesy, the invisible wings of poetry, the goddess of poetry, with the, with the power of the written word, poetic word, imaginary word, he enters into that atmosphere of the bird and enjoys those sounds and sights, the different fragrance and flowers. Similarly, not beyond earth, but on very earth, Sri Aurobindo is describing a plethora of activities that are going on and that are heralding and welcoming the, the advent of Savitri through these lines. Most sumptuous lines of the epic, a hymn of praise, a litany of cries. You know, so many cries are around. In a way, every bird is welcoming Savitri. A strain of choral priestly music saying, and swung on the swaying senses of the trees. There is breeze, so many trees. Sensor is actually a pot for fragrance, burning fragrance in the church. But Sri Aurobindo is comparing the swinging boughs and trees with sensors. Sensor. In a way, as if whole nature, all the trees, all the dancing trees are uh, leaving fragrance in and welcoming Savitri, the advent of Savitri. A sacrifice of perfume filled the hours. The whole hour, the whole atmosphere, the, the time of birth was welcomed by different kinds of ahutis, of perfumes. Pale mango blossoms fed the liquid voice of the love maiden coil. And the brown bee muttered in fragrance mid the honey buds. Bees are buzzing around, stealing honey from flower buds. Love maiden the coil is singing out of extreme ecstasy on the pale mango blossoms. 
and her liquid voice, her sonorous voice, her heart touching voice is being influenced by that atmosphere. The sunlight was a great God's golden smile. It was not an ordinary feeling. It was not an ordinary sunlight. Sunlight was as if it was great God's golden feeling. Mind the alliteration there, mind the beauty of the world. And then he concludes with this line, all nature was at beauty's festival. The whole nature was in a way enjoying the festival of beauty. It had become beauty's festival. Everywhere it was ananda and delight. Everywhere it was serenades of uh, that, that perfection, that realization of Savitri's birth. In that magical moment, by, the, by using the analogy of nature and by creating that atmosphere, Sri Rabindu has presented, has uh, brought, out, brought about the birth of Savitri. So we can understand and assimilate how beautifully he defines and discusses the natural beauty, how masterfully he uses nature to carve and to create and to interpret the celestial things, the marvelous things, the magnificent episodes of his poem. Then in the forest, when for the first time, Satyavan and Savitri meet, how he's expressing and introducing Satyavan, the character of Satyavan. He called Satyavan a poster child of beauty and solitude. All his life, Satyavan spent mid the forest silences. He was in a way the king of the jungle. He was deeply acquainted with every mood of nature I don't know how many of you have visited Himalayan grasslands. Bugyal, we call in Uttarakhand, we call them steps, Bugyal. I also don't know how many of you have personally seen Brahma Kamal, the lotus of God, that, that is a very high tropical, very um, uh, on, on very higher Himalayas that flower alone blossoms, especially in the rainy season. Brahma Kamal. Looking at the flower, smelling the fragrance, and the whole grassland dotted with those flowers, and witnessing the silently murmuring rill nearby, and the whole grassland, whole snowy Himalayan peaks, the deep Himalayan silences, occasionally interrupted by falling snow, uh, falling glaciers, or the sound of the close by stream. That atmosphere is in a way indecipherable. It is beyond words. One feels that one is in Devaloka while treading those mountain paths. So this kind of atmosphere, this kind of life is lived by the hero, Satyavan. The poet is interpreting him, he's introducing him in, by using these words, a poster child of beauty and solitude, heir to the centuries of lonely wise, a brother of the sun sign and the sky. Satyavan is a wise person, centuries wise, he's great, he's Veda Novar, and his brother, of the sun sign and the sky, a wanderer communing with depths and marge. Everywhere on the Himalaya, he has visited every place. He has communed with every mood of nature. He has realized and relished all joys of mother nature. Nothing is hidden for him. Nothing can escape his eye. He can express all moods of mother nature. So a wanderer communing with the depths and marge on the margins as well as on the great deepest depths of nature, he can commune, he can reveal the mysteries. A Veda knower of the unwritten book, perusing the mystic scripture of her forms. This is again about nature. He has all those wisdom, all those efficiency, he can, he can write down the unwritten book 
of nature that is the very nature itself is a mystic book difficult to unravel unre 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 unfold but satyavan has that capacity he had caught her hierophant significances nature has deep capacity to reveal the mysteries the mystic formulas hierophant as we know is the mystery re revealer a person or a priest who reveals the sacred or secret spiritual doctrines religious doctrines nature has already that power immense potentiality to reveal the mysteries her her sphere in immense intense immense imaginations learned taught by sublimities of his stream and wood and voices of the sun and star and flame satyavan is taught he is nurtured he is nursed he is fed in the school of nature the stars the mountains the rivers the sunlight the moonbeams are his natural teachers he is he has learned all his wisdom in that primal silence in that primal beauty of nature and then when satyavan meets savitri this is just before their their uh, what she have no uses that french word rendezvous dr belu ji will tell if i am pronouncing that word properly the meet destined meeting place before the rendezvous happens and when it once it happens then he introduces himself by using these words i met page number 403 i met the frankness of you know generally when the lover or when the would be bridegroom meets the would be bridegroom the discussion is on material things the material opulence the future dreams about amassing wealth and about the all the future plans centered around material things here satyavan is introducing himself by using nature that how closely he is related to nature as a bridegroom as a future husband for savitri he is expressing his qualifications he is in a way uh, 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 trying to be true on the touchstone of savitri's standards he is deeply relating himself to his relationship with mother nature again by the holding the hand of mother nature he is proving himself that how closely he is in love with existence and how natural existence how para prakriti prakriti is in deep relationship with satyavan i met the frankness of the primal earth i enjoyed the intimacy of infant god these words primal earth and infant god i detailed i discussed in detailed the exact meaning of these words with the late shradhavan our sister from savitri bhavan and it was she who when while i was re doing research on savitri she explained to me that on that himalayan grandeur on that on, in the himalaya nature is also in paint in her infancy pristine virgin untrodden uncharted unspoiled so she had no had used those words primal earth and i met here with infant god in a way very beautifully she had no discusses even god is infant god is a small child god is in 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 his or her virgin form on the himalayas i met the frankness of the primal earth i enjoyed the intimacy of infant god in the great tapestry chambers of her state her is used for nature in the mystic estates in the mystic chambers of mother nature i have seen all these things i have met with god free in her boundless palace i have dwelt the whole earth is nature's boundless palace i have dwelt in that the, in the in this world indulged by the warm mother of us all near reared with my natural brothers in her house mother nature is our marvelous mother she feeds us she loves us she uh, indulges with us 
through different ways. We are her making, her craft, and with my natural brothers. Again, he's calling Prakriti, my natural brothers, the trees, the mountains, the fountains, the snows, the steps, everywhere, the natural phenomenon, the natural phenomena, the nature's faces are supporting Satyavan as if uh, uh, the, the support and the help that we receive from our sisters and our brothers. So nature has helped him with that way. I lay in the wide bare immense embrace of the heaven. The sunlight's radiant blessing clasped my brow. The moonbeam's silver ecstasy at night kissed my dim lids to sleep. I have enjoyed sunshine in daytime. And when I go to sleep, I go to sleep mid the gentle lori, the lullaby of moonbeams that sweetly and gently kiss my eyelids and soothe me go to go to sleep. So this is how closely, how masterfully Sri Aurobindo has used nature and the beauty of nature to further his episode, to further his, uh, his, his, his story and his entire narration of the story that Savitri H, how masterfully he used, he has used nature. And then dear friends, when the fatal moment of Satyavan's untimely passing comes, again, it is for the first time, the Mahabharata also says, Ved Vyasa also says, that this was the first time when Savitri requested for anything before her in-laws. This was the first time. This is the sign of her being a high-born maiden. She was not an ordinary woman. Sage Narad, while discussing her aura, her atmosphere, her character, calls her that thou hast not drunk from earthly cup. He knew that this, guy, this, this, this woman is very special. She is far untouched from all impurities of the earth. She is the ray of God, the ray of sunshine or sun on this earth who has come here, gratefully come here to bless us, to save us, to help us, to uplift us to her skies, to her heights of understanding. So the, Savitri cannot express directly. It is only she who is boldly facing all hurricanes of life. It is only, you know, there is a line in Savitri, a future knowledge is an added pain in the book of uh, fate. A future knowledge is an added pain. When we know the future in advance, there is no limits of our pain, of our privation, of our suffering, silent suffering. She has boldly suffered silently, not giving an pent idea to her in-laws or to the people around her that what she is going through inwardly. But when the day comes, when the fatal day comes, she cannot say directly that I am accompanying, I wish to accompany Satyavan today to the forests to collect firewoods. I am going there. I wish to go there because I have to save his life. He, will, he may die today. So she uses nature again as a symbol, as a cue, as an excuse that I have spent one whole year here in this forest hermitage, but I have not enjoyed the beauty of nature. And my dear mother, permit me today to accompany my husband with linked hands. Together we will go to forests and enjoy nature. So look how beautifully she uses these words. Her eyes rich with the shining mist of joy as one who comes from a heavenly embassy. Okay, I, I regret uh, these are not the lines. Yeah. The book of death, death in the forest, the canto number third, the only canto of the book. Savitri says, now has a strong desire seized all my heart to go with Satyavan holding his hand into the life that he has loved and touch Herbs he has trod and know the forest flowers and here at ease the birds and the scurrying life 
that starts and ceases, rich forest of boughs and all the mystic whisperings of the woods. You know, the, uh, the woods are always mystic. Whenever we go to forest, we listen different sounds, we li listen different silences, we realize different things. Many mystic things happen. The deep and enriching silence is there. The sounds are also enriching, revealing before us new moods and metaphors of nature. So Savitri, by excusing nature, by making a lamb excuse that she wishes to see nature, she wishes to hear and enjoy the wish, mystic whisperings of the woods, the different silences, the nature that Satvan, her husband is in deep love and has enjoyed all his life so greatly. I too have a desire now, a strong desire within me, not an ordinary desire. A strong desire is within me now. So mother, kindly permit me to accompany my husband today to that forest. And Sri Aurobindo has used a marvelous imagery there. Both of them are going to, uh, to the forest with the linked hands, of course, holding hand and, uh, hand, hands. And then Satyavan is overjoyed. He has no idea of the fatal hour. And he's, with, of course, with his wife by his side, he's overjoyed. He's trying to tell her everything in that single hour. The, the, the different trees, their names, the different birds that are calling from different boughs, their sounds, their moods, the creepers, the swinging creepers, the inviting and welcoming branches of trees and the moods of nature. Everything is marvelously explained by Sri Aurobindo. I'm quoting him. He showed her all the forest's riches whatever richness, whatever opulence there in the forest, the flowers innumerable of every udder and hue and soft, thick, clinging creepers, red and green and strange, rich, plumaged birds to every cry that haunted, sweetly distant boughs replied, with the shrill singers, with the shrill singer's name more sweetly called. He spoke of all the things he loved. They were his boyhood's comrades and his playfellows, cowals and companions of his life, here in this world, whose every mood he knew. Satyavan knew every mood of Mother Nature. He knew the sound and the song of every bird. He knew the season and the blossoming and the efflorescence of all shades of forest life. And he's expressing and explaining that magic before his beautiful wife, Savitri. So this is, this is the atmosphere. This is the mastery with which Sri Aurobindo uses nature and the beauty of nature to further his story, to explain the life of Satyavan and Savitri and other characters. Similarly, there are so many occasions later on also, I have mentioned earlier the debate of love and death. There are remarkable natural beauty there. Then the return to the earth and Himalaya is amply discussed by uh, in the book 11, the soul's consummation. Uh, that is also, there's so much beauty of nature mentioned there. So in, a, in one word, the whole of Savitri is a bunch of nature. It's a fragrant flower of spiritual and poetic realizations that leaves us the rasika, the pataka on the doorstep of bliss. So if we are pure enough, open enough, receptive enough, surrendered enough before the lotus feet of the mother and Sri Aurobindo, we will definitely realize that and enjoy that bliss that is so, so freely and magnanimously granted to earth people, to us by Rishi Arvindo and the mother. Thank you so much. This is all from my side. Uh, and uh, I leave it to the readers for any, to the viewers for any question or queries or any observations and uh, further adding to this talk. Thank you so much. Mr. Ram. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Charanji. I mean, it seems like, you know, you ended very quickly. 
because we were just beginning to soak in all that delight, all that beauty that you pointed us to specific, you know, specific lines from different cantos. And um, I, I just, uh, you know, you made it so, it, it was becoming so clear and so obvious that to have that deeper communion with mother nature, um, how poetry, especially poetry like Sri Aurobindo's, you know, like this Savitri, how poetry can be such a beautiful entry into that. Uh, you know, we live in with this, all this, uh, whatever modern so-called development, we are, we are so cut off from nature. You are one of the fortunate ones to have grown up in that beautiful uh, region and to live and work there. But those of us kind of, kind of like, you know, born and brought up in places like Delhi, Mumbai, and all these places, um, just to visualize the beauty of mother nature like this and to transport ourselves into that. Um, what a beautiful journey, what a beautiful experience that can be. So um, rather than me just saying, if there are any comments or questions from our participants, please feel free to unmute yourself and share your thoughts. Yeah, good afternoon. Just... Okay, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, what uh, uh, Charan Singh ji, really what uh, Billu ji told, uh, even I felt nobody other than you sitting at Joshi Mart would have been the right person to deliberate on the topic. So we are fortunate to have you today. And uh, you have beautifully explained how God is found in nature and nature fulfill God. I felt all your deliberations. I was clearly looking at you. All deliberations were pouring from a higher plane. When uh, you are describing Himalayan beauty with the Brahma Kamal, I felt as if I were there enjoying the hypnotized ecstasy. It is a different uh, type of discussion today. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Vijay. Any other comment? Uh, yes, uh, may I have a uh, may I ask a question here? Yeah. Yes, so, please, please, Gunwanti. Yes, uh, hello, Velu Di. <laughs> You're so, so nice to see you. <laughs> yeah. Hello, so, Charan and uh, Velu Di, there is this question that uh, I read actually two pages of Savitri every day. I think it's more than ten years that I've been doing it. Um, it's too complex for me to understand, but the basis of the whole thing I know little bit. You know that the. Uh, the background is the story of Satyavan Savitri and all that. And, you know, they've used it as a symbol. But uh, particularly, I'm not able to kind of, you know, understand uh, what is uh, this reading leading me to. Sometimes I think I'm able to grasp some subtle things in my life, something that is happening around me. I am able to comprehend uh, some subtle things, which uh, normally I wouldn't or others wouldn't do that. Uh, that is what uh, one benefit I have seen. Uh, but uh, from devotional perspective, I'm a more of a devotional kind of person. So from that point, uh, I don't see that uh, thing developing. So I'm wondering like uh, uh, where this will lead me to. <laughs> uh, ji, will you say something or should I? Uh, no, please, please go ahead. Please go okay. ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, sir, one of the blessings of Savitri is uh, to quote the mother or to go to take help from her words uh, with her, that is uh, from her talk to Mona Sarkar. Savitri is uh, in a way Sri Aurobindo's sound body. Whenever we are approaching Savitri, reading Savitri, re uh, realizing and relishing Savitri, we are face to face with the aura and the personality of Rishi Sri Aurobindo. So, even if we have difficult, it, 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 it cannot be understood uh, mentally, firstly. And second, it is always there whenever we have that, uh, that state of becoming tabula raja, little purity inside us. Savitri itself will reveal its, uh, herself before you. It's, uh, mind you, this is my personal experience. As the mother also says, all questions of existence all personal tribulations and personal queries and personal puzzles that we all have faced, uh, we face in our lives. 
are answered there even the the most one of the charms of uh, that the mastery over english language the different shades and meanings and different appearances of the language are there so it is just read savitri it is necessary to reflect upon why am i reading savitri this if 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 you can answer that question you 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 will find your answer i am reading savitri to get confidence and courage and a spunk to face day to day tornadoes of my life i am reading savitri to have uh, to breathe that atmosphere for the time being so that i can soak that atmosphere and get myself invigorated for the whole day i am reading savitri because i love shri ravindo and the mother and because my guru has spent more than 3 decades of his life he he contributed to this poem i am reading savitri because i have to understand the mysteries of existence that are beautifully uh, explained there i am reading savitri because the philosophy of pain is remarkably insightfully discussed there we all have immense complaints to life that life is not good i have we have all have problems sufferings relationship question the question of existence of sustenance but all these things are masterfully convincingly replied and given there so savitri is a blessing in different ways we need not to read it to understand just to breathe the atmosphere and one day it will reveal itself before us all those who are sincere students of savitri have explained it have admitted it that nothing nobody has the power to tell you what is good and bad in savitri how to do it how to do that the best thing is to to make yourself as a sincere child like all of us try to do and to 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 request savitri to adore savitri to urge savitri that you explain yourself before me ma you explain your figure that it's of the body the world body of shri ramdoj uh, very personality and he will definitely reveal himself before you when the opportune time comes just read savitri just your love for savitri and also for different reasons like this thank you thank you thank you um and i think i will just add one thing what mother said which is true of savitri as well and as well as any work of shri aurobindo what she reminds us that you know who can really understand shri aurobindo all one can do is love him a little and if savitri is a means to fall in love with him again and again over and over as charan ji was saying even you know like his use of the language even if we start with just that very material outer thing you know it takes us it deepens our love for him and uh, that's how the closeness uh, so you know that itself can be a sadhana i mean i just thought of it because gunwant ji brought up uh, the idea of bhakti the devotion so you know that is the prime of that so thank you so much for a beautiful question and a beautiful response from charan ji uh if there is any other comment or question from any other participants please feel free to unmute yourself uh we had one comment from uh in the chat box from neha uh beautiful passionately beautiful description of savitri and nature and thank you so much for touching my heart today vishwajita also had a comment for beautiful talk anybody else who has any quick comment or question okay yes good good night good um charan ji i have to say we uh, last time you were here you spoke on um, courage you know the rasa of courage veer rasa in savitri and this time yes veer rasa in savitri and this time we took up this theme of beauty of nature so we'll have to bring you back for another kind of delight uh, you know from veer rasa to shringar rasa to something else in between we'll come up with that but um, it's really been a delight to have you with us and sure to share you know to listen to you and to kind of you know bring us back if we were a little distant from this aspect of savitri you brought us close to that again so i thank you so much for that um i think we will close at this point thank you so and, much and uh, 
a quick reminder to everyone, please follow us on our social media on Facebook or Instagram. So you'll stay updated with all our upcoming events uh, and the new issues of Renaissance that we bring out every month. Thank you so much. And then thank I you so add, much. Uh, yes, please, Harvinder ji. Yes. Uh, first of all, thank you, Charanjit ji. Uh, many times uh, I am listening uh, your sessions. Actually, first time uh, in during COVID, uh, when you were explaining Shri or Bindo, uh, first time I just ignore. <laughs> but second time when I was listening, you were explaining, 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 I was just sit down two hours. That time, just was soaking ki what kind of person you are. Uske baad to I ki, never ki, try ki kabhi aapka session miss na ho. The way you explain, na, the way you like, deepen the lines, jo aap unko ex, bahut deep way mein explain kar, deepen unki mushkil lines ko bahut simple way mein jo aap explain karte ho, to understand as yes, yeah, be, uh, 150th birthday pe Shri Rabindu Society daily walon ne hum logon ne 6 months Savitri ko read kiya jaise abhi uh, Mr Agarwal sir ne same jo question kiya ki hum read karte ja rahe karte ja rahe but sometimes kuch line strike kar rahi hai kuch line just upar se nikal rahi hai but wo kahin na kahin baad mein daily life mein kahin na kahin connect kar pa rahe hain online ke sath but for first time I read the same answer that you have not done, I have not done anything. But the way you explain, it's you are a blessing for Shri Aurobindo Society, for many of us, the way you explain. And thank you, Billu Ji, you are arranging the session. You are coming. The way you have written so much, we have written एक जस्ट एक ब्लाइंड ट्रस्ट है उनकी तरफ से कि वो बहुत स्ट्रांग जो मुझे पर्सनली लगता है कि दे आर स्ट्रांग फोर्सेस दे आर नॉट नेचुरल जो थे जो उन्होंने इतना कुछ लिखा है कि मतलब कि वो उनकी तरफ जुड़े रहें तो जस्ट एक जितना पढ़ते रहें समझते रहें उतना ही हमारे पैटर्न्स खुलते जा रहे हैं उनको समझ अपने आप में क्लीनिंग अवर सेल्फ उनके अंदर से ही क्लीन करते जाते हैं जैसे उनकी पानी को पड़े और मुश्किल से लाइनों को आप इतने सुंदर वे में एक्सप्लेन कर देते हैं थैंक यू सो मच एंड गॉड ब्लेस जो आप इतना अच्छा काम करते हो तो आपने रिसर्च की है तो ग्रेट थिंग जो आपने किया है प्राउड ऑफ यू सर थैंक यू सो मच वेरी नाइस सेशन वेरी नाइस सेशन थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू Thank you so much, Harvinder ji. Uh, Charan ji, jaise aap uh, Renesa mein regularly contribute karte hain, Harvinder ji is also in the initial, yes. I think last uh, few months se inka koi naya contribution nahi aaya. But she's been now busy working with Tara Di in Delhi Ashram she was mentioning earlier. So really wonderful to have you join us, Harvinder ji. We look forward to having you with us again. And uh, I just want to thank you again, Charan ji. And... Uh, you know, to really um, give us this very delightful Sunday. Um, so I <laughs> Thank you so much. Pleasure is mine. Your, yes. And. I wish everyone have uh, continued to have feel this delight and joy rest of your day and the coming week. And we will be seeing you soon in our next event. Namaste sure. and thank you once again. Sabko namaskar pranam. Thank you. Jai.